Yeah, I got some fellas that are meeting me over at the um, at Toucan's Lighting Place in about an hour and a half, if we can. Okay. And um, well, maybe maybe we don't have time to go to Bricktown. I don't. Oh, know. we'll just we'll just get in there and go. This was another one of the houses that would have some drive-by shootings. Well, here we are in the Wayne Coins. Yeah, neighborhood. yeah. My, uh, my beautiful neighborhood. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It, to it really is, yeah. We scrambled to put together the money um, that was left over from our budget of doing our first record with Warner Brothers back then in 1992. Yeah. You know, and at the time, I, I don't even know if we, we could foresee how much living in this neighborhood was going to mean to us. You know, I mean, we were living down in Norman. All of us were sort of spread out. And then I've always lived in this neighborhood. My mother just lived over on 12th Street. My brothers all live on 9th. Um, and I knew the neighborhood anyway. Um, and at the time, I didn't think of it as being um, dangerous and all that sort of stuff. You know, right. just thought, oh, it's, it's a beautiful, uh, sort of unique house. Um, and now we've been here, you know what, um, 15 years, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And these houses in the back, um, you know, they, some of them were just, were just bad falling apart rent houses that we just contacted the, um, the owners and we little by little bought them up. If you had come by earlier in the summer, you'd have seen our big UFO light show sort of sprawled out as we, <laughs> as we were working on it, yeah. which is the greatest thing ever. I mean, as a sort of, you know, a hands-on sort of artist, that's what you want. You need a place where you can yeah. do stuff. So you've got a, you know, you know, you've got a nice place established here that's, uh, yeah. that, that works for you real well, but still in all the surroundings. What, what is this area of town called? It's, I don't even know if it's called anything, you know, in between 16th Street and 10th Street is like the last tier before it's kind of no man's land. When we think right. of when you get past 10th Street, I still think there's some beautiful old houses and neighborhoods there, but it gets worse and worse. And of course, once you get past 6th Street, yeah. um, to Reno is kind of really the horrible no man's land um, where properties down there probably sell for three or four thousand dollars for a house down there yeah. whereas you get across 16th street and they'll go for eighty thousand dollars and so and you you know you, you you get to know a neighborhood and it, it 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 means more than just a place where you're you know you keep your junk you really you really you know you start to love the people and and what it um you know what the neighborhood brings to your life and stuff and so yeah. this is this is just just so for the for the record this is not my car <laughs> I got to show you my old high school class, and it's not—it's not called. Um, it's not even a high school now, but um, the building is still there. It's now kind of an advanced um, school where um, kids from all over the state come, and it's about music and math and arts and and English and all this sort of stuff. I'm looking in your mirror to make sure nobody. Where are we headed now, Wayne? We are driving down Classen Boulevard, and I'm going to show you. The building that used to be the Long John Silvers that I worked at from 1977 to I think almost 1990. We were already signed to Warner Brothers and I'd, I was still working at this Long John Silvers. But I fear this building probably won't be here that much longer. They keep sort of redoing it. But yeah, yeah the, uh, the corner of 30th and Classen here. And you survived an armed robbery there. Well, I really survived several, but the <laughs> first one was the worst one. So at now we're driving past, um, what is this, 23rd and Robinson, and this is the famous Blue Note. This is the, the very first um, place that would allow us to play. This boarded up white thing right here is um, my dad's shop that he owned um, from 19, oh, probably 1980 to maybe 1985 or 86. And we would rehearse in the meat locker in the back. <laughs> and because we got to know the guys um, uh, at the bar right next door, the Blue Note, um, they were the first ones to let us play as the Flaming Lips. Um, Did they ever pay you? Or would you uh, yeah, I think it was always like, you know, you'd get whatever you could bring in at the door. We probably, um, you know, it was one of those, it was our first show, so everybody that we knew, you know, we demanded that they come and, and pay the $3 um, charge at the door or something. So we probably walked out of there making 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we're driving through Bricktown, which didn't even exist back in the day. I mean, this used to just be empty, uh, deserted warehouses and things. And um, as time has gone on, it's become this big sort of um, already sort of place down here. And I'm pointing out to the camera that you're going to get later that we're standing right here on um, right here on Flaming Lips Alley down here in Bricktown. And who could have ever thought that the Flaming Lips um, whatever street named after them. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? I think if you're interested and you're curious, you'll find that alley down there in Bricktown the same way that you would find our music. It's not going to be on the front page of the newspaper. It's going to be in there a little bit. So I think we hit all the spots. And then you can go back and do your B-roll sort of shots. Yeah, I've got a list of them. There you go.